something needing um, translation for Mandarin. Because we have someone coming if you need it. Okay. When Lucy gets here, we'll, um, we'll have her come and sit with you. And that way she can kind of help you translate if need be. And uh, one last reminder, if you haven't signed in, please see me. Okay. Yeah, what Martin's talking about is um, we have a roster. Some of you may already be on that roster. If you came last year to the meeting, or if you recently got a notice through Athens, you know, asking uh, if you want to be part of Neighborhood Watch, and you sent me an email, or Brian or Azumi from the city an email, okay, we have your contact information. If that's the case, you do not have to sign up on this sheet over here that Martin's talking to you about, okay? And then what about childcare? Do we have any kids that want to go and watch a movie? No? I'm talking little kids, not the big kids. <laughs> all right, okay, yeah, sorry all you big kids. Okay, so, and also one other thing too, before we get started, usually, uh, I have, last year I didn't do this meeting, I happened to be on vacation, and so um, I didn't realize how small the room is, but we're gonna work on that next year. There is a larger room that we could open up, but it'd be extremely hot, so to keep it cool, we brought you in all nice and tight, but that'll be good, because I know sometimes, People have a hard time hear, hearing it, so at least you'll be able to hear. Are y'all cool enough? All right, good. And the tacos are good? All right, and at 10 o'clock, margaritas. All right? And then we're going to shut it down at 2. All right? Closing time at 2. Rob's got two movies, Wally -E and Toy Story 3, for any of the kids that want to watch a movie. And Brian, who's going to actually do the babysitting for us? Jillian. Who is Jill Jillian? Jillian? So Jillian, one of our gals from the city, will do. Um, she'll do the uh, movie for you. So if you've got any kids that want to, that come in, want to go see the movie, just let Brian know, and he'll get you over to where Jillian's at. Okay, and they'll be safe, just so you know. Okay, I'm Rick Adams, and we're at Temple Sheriff Station. Uh, Rob Alvarez is my partner. Another partner I have is Kirk Cardella, who is on vacation today, so he's not here. And our Sergeant Ron Miranda. Uh, he's actually um, been busy working all week, and he had something going on this evening. He couldn't make it. But Rob and I are going to entertain you for the first half of tonight. But before we do, uh, I want to let the captain say a few words. This is our captain, our unit commander at Temple Station, uh, Captain Chris Nee. Okay, so we'd like to talk to him for a couple minutes. Well, thank you very much. And I guess I should turn around and clap to you guys. So thank you very much for coming. So it shows how interested you, you are in your city and your neighborhood. So I commend you for that. Um, I can't believe it's been a year. I remember being sitting here a year ago tonight, or it's close to that, talking about issues. Uh, we hope that time the neighborhood's gotten better, or at least got stronger. Um, this is an opportunity for all of us to introduce and meet each other, not just the sheriff's department, but more importantly, who's sitting next to you, who's sitting behind you, who's sitting in front of you. That is the strength of the community, the citizens of Michigan. And we can't be on every street, every minute of every day. And so you really, part of the needs that we're holding here is not only build a relationship between us and the citizens of Temple City, but amongst the citizens themselves. Because when you go on vacation, hopefully folks across the table from you, or next door to you, are looking out for your house. And if, if, by knowing who lives next door to you, by name, a car, you know what looks right and what doesn't look right in the neighborhood. We can drive up and down the neighborhoods all day long. We don't know anyone's car. We don't know other people who live there. You do. And if you see something that doesn't look right in the neighborhood, please don't hesitate to call us. And don't get more into the, the, what we want you to do and uh, tips to help keep the neighborhood safe. But hey, I just wanted to say thank you very much for coming. Out. I'm always impressed with these area watching meetings. When you do it on Thursday or Friday night, 5.30, 6 o'clock at night, and you have a thousand other things you could be doing, but you chose to be here, and that means a lot. So we thank you very much for that. Enjoy your food, and I'll let the start of the show begin. Thanks, Captain. <laughs> okay, so um, just a couple more introductions real quick. Brian is going to be back there in the sit with the city. Uh, Brian is actually, um, he and I work together. Um, we've been working together for, I don't know, five, ten years now. Uh, just, and has it been longer than that, Brian? Citywise? Yeah, citywise. About 11 years? Okay, yeah, see, time flies. So for all you youngsters out there, enjoy the time that you have now, because when you get older, it goes by quick. And, and it's also hard to get by as well. We won't talk about that. Okay, so Martin back here. Martin, stand up and raise your hand. Martin's one of our volunteers at the station. Martin's been with me since we started this program, and I'll explain a little bit more about that as we go. 
Um, he's also one of our area leaders. So you're all involved tonight by coming, and thank you very much for coming and, and being involved. If you want to be a little more involved, we, um, we have area leaders, and all we do is we meet once a month from January through October for one hour, and I limit it to one hour. Just like it's 7.30 tonight, we're gonna get you out of here because everyone's got busy lives. But we talk about the program, and we've revamped the program, which I will talk about in a minute. Um, but what we're looking for is people that want, want input. So what we're doing is we're gonna meet next week, and then next month when we meet, we're gonna, the area leaders, there's about 10 to 15 that are active, are gonna decide what it is our next year's programs are gonna be about. So if you want, if you want to see the program change or be a success, um, and you wanna be more involved in just coming to the meetings, uh, get a hold of Martin tonight, or you can talk to me after the meeting, and we'd love to have you sign up as an area leader. We've got okay. one so far. We've got one, okay, great. Yeah, you gotta be careful with Martin, because he's gonna strong arm you, right? right? And he's gonna to try to, you know, force you to be an area leader. We want you to be involved if you want to be, but we obviously, you know, this is just great having you here tonight too, okay? So just so you know. Uh, and then at the end of the night, we're gonna have a raffle. So we're raffling off, we got a number of coupons um, for sandwiches and fries over McDonald's. So we'll raffle that off after we have you fill out evaluations because we want your input as well. And one last introduction, uh, Jerry, I think most of you probably know Jerry, a number of you do. Jerry John he's been with the city for years, he's got a business here. And no videotape tonight, right? Uh, yes. Oh, we are. Is that videotaping or just? Yes. Video. Okay. So I have just to be careful with what I say. Uh, <laughs> no more than usual. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to be careful because not only am I on video, but I got the captain here. See, when the captain's not here, I can get away with a little bit more. But since he's here tonight, that's not going to happen. So, right, boss? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So let me talk a little bit about what we do, um, just so you have an idea about what Rob and I and Kirk and Ron Miranda do. <clears throat> And then we'll talk about why we're here tonight and what it is we're focusing on for this year's meetings. Anything involving the city, we're involved with. <clears throat> it could be quality of life issues. It could be dealing with the council members. We meet with them once a month, and we should get one or two here tonight. At every meeting we've had the last two years, we've had at least one show up. Uh, we deal with juveniles. We deal with search warrants. We do probation operations, parole operations, which I'll explain in just a bit. Uh, presentations, drug awareness, any, any type of investigation involving our city we're involved with. Massage parlors pop up in the city every once in a while, we get involved with those as well. So there's a number of things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis, which actually makes the job pretty exciting. We're not out there handling routine calls for service, okay? So your patrol deputies that come out there when your house or your car get broken into, they're a little different. Their, their capacity is different than what we do, all right? So what I'm gonna tell you is, as we go through this packet tonight, which we'll do now, is if you have a problem, we want you to call the station first if it's something emergent where you need service. Because if you try calling me, you, you may not get me, and actually the chances are pretty good you're not gonna get me. Because I won't be in the office, or if I am, I'm gonna be busy. Uh, you might get me, but it's rare. But I always return your phone calls, so if you need something, definitely call me or email me. So let's go through the packets real quick. Yes, sir, Rob. Okay. If anybody can get a packet, just raise your hand. We'll get you one soon. Okay, yeah, we'll, I'll wait to get packets in. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, folks. Yeah, that's okay. We'll get them to you. No worries. Martin, I'll take a few if you got them. Okay, we good? Who still needs them? All right. There you go. Okay. And I haven't seen Lucy coming yet, but I think she will be here. So. Okay. Anybody else? All right. This is my mother right here, everybody. This is Sharon. She lives in the area, so I am vested in your community. This is my son Josh, who's paying attention as he's playing. What are you playing on your game there? What's it called? What is it? Clash of Clans. Right? Did I say that right? So he's, he's raiding villages right now. You can tell he really cares about what his dad has to say. So this is Josh and this is Katie, my youngest. You guys say hi? Alright? And Evelyn's over here talking to us too. So. Uh, 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 Okay, everybody's got one? All right, so let's talk about the program. 
and, uh, and then we're going to move on to some of the crime trends that we want you to be aware of, and then we're going to go into the research board here tonight. Okay, so as I mentioned, the first sheet in your packet, it's got all our contact information. It's got all the guys on the team, including Ron Miranda, and it's also got Brian Arizumi's contact information. If you've got a city problem, email or call Brian. Brian, email better to get you than, than calling if they can? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, what I've, what I've come to learn is I've gotten a little more savvy with, with technology is if you email me about a problem you have, it's much easier for me to be able to send that to other deputies. So if you've got a problem about traffic, I can send that to the traffic uh, officer and let him know to go out there and do some enforcement for us, as well as us taking care of it too. And that's another thing we do too. If we need to do a traffic operation, we get involved with the motor and we actually help out with that as well. Okay, so just so everybody knows. Um, so email me or call me if you don't have email access, but email is the best way and I will get back to you, get back to everybody. But, and for a while we didn't have the station phone number on this on this sheet here, and uh, I think that one pointed out to me the fact that it wasn't there, and people need to know that if you need something right away, we want you to call the station, all right? And if it's an emergency, you guys know what number to call, right? What number is it? It's a test. 911, okay. You're all adults. Usually when we do the presentations for the kids, you know, we get them all to say 911. They're a little more excited about it than you are, but we won't hold that against you, all right? Okay, so the next page, is a map of the areas. Okay, so what happened was, you know, the way we did the Neighborhood Watch program a couple of years ago wasn't really working. We used to do block meetings, and it was hard because the, the uh, demographics have changed. So people don't communicate with their neighbors like they used to, right? And that's okay. I mean, things have changed. It's not a, the safe world that we knew it to be 20, 30, or 40 years ago. Not a problem. So we, we sat down with the city and we said, how can we change this program to get more people involved and also make it more effective time-wise, you know, to get, you know, so we're not wasting our time and spinning our wheels. So the idea we came up with was we were gonna break the city into 12 areas, your area four, and we were gonna hold one meeting a month every month of the year, right? Which has been great. Ever since we've been doing it, we have anywhere from 50, folks, you can come sit over here if you like. There's a couple spots right here. We've had anywhere from 50 to 100 people at our meetings, and usually we have anywhere from 60 to 70. This is a small group, which is fine, um, but usually our groups are bigger. So it's been a huge success. But part of the reason is because we're giving, we hand out flyers, we give phone messages, but what else? We offered you free food, right? And childcare for the folks that have kids because it's too hard for young families to get away. So what perfect way to get a family out with kids than to give them childcare, feed them, you know, and then they can attend the meeting and they're done by 7.30. So, you know, there was some planning behind it, and it worked because we got you out here. So, okay, the problem with that we found, and that's why I tell you with our program, we're constantly changing it, okay? We're always making changes because we want to improve and make it better. What we did was, on the next page, we found that November and December weren't really working for us because of Thanksgiving and Christmas. So we figured, well, let's, we, and just an idea we had a couple months ago at one of the area leader meetings we had, where we meet once a month from January through October for that one hour, we came up with the idea to change the areas. And you can see the changes if you look closely. And now we have 10 areas. So we combine a couple of the areas. And now we have 10. So now in area one, your meeting is going to be in January. All right? And area four should have stayed the same. Actually, take that back. Your area got a little bit bigger. We took you all the way to Roseby Boulevard. But it just got a little bit bigger, that's all. But what we're going to do is, in January is area one. In uh, April is going to be area four, okay? So that way, the area you're in is going to coincide with the month that we're going to have the meeting. And then we already have the dates, and the dates will be posted on the city website as well. And once we have all your contact information, we'll be able to give you a notice via email that there's a meeting coming up in your area. But you're still going to get the flyers that we hand out door to door, and you're going to get the phone messages as well. And you can still access the city website, okay? So far, it's been a pretty big success. And thanks to Martin, we have, how many um, people do we have signed up through email that are getting weekly notices? Okay, before the ninth, 1,050. Okay, 1,050. So we have 1,050 folks that are connected to our email. We have about 60 folks that signed up through Athens. So if you got something in the mail from Athens about joining the neighborhood watch, and you've already signed up here tonight on the list that Martin gave you, you don't have to worry about that. 
We're just trying to get as many people in the city uh, into our email contact database because we're going to give that information over to Brian at the city and every week he's going to send you a crime blotter which we're going to go through in this packet so you can see what it is. Okay, your area, area four, the biggest problem we're having are residential burglaries and vehicle burglaries. Okay, those are our two biggest crimes, thefts. All right, as you can see in a six month period, you've only had in your area three residential burglaries. That's not bad at all. This last month, we had about 12 to 15 in our city, which is a lot for us. Ma average, maybe four to eight is what we have as an average. And I'll explain kind of why that's going on and why it's important that you're here tonight as we go on. So all you're gonna see on this key for this map are your residential burglaries and your vehicle burglaries, okay? The next page is the crime blotter I was talking about. Every week, we'll send you a notice in English and in Mandarin about the crimes, the majority of the crimes that are occurring throughout the whole city, not just in your area, so you're aware of what's going on. This is what you're gonna get in English and in Mandarin, okay? So you can take a look at that later, but it's good information. It's just a basic summary about what happened in the general area about where it occurred. Anybody have any questions so far? Everybody all right? Everybody still awake? All right, there's gonna be a test later, so make sure you're paying attention. All right, the next sheet is the sheet with the house in the middle of it. I put that in there. You know, you're not going to get all the contact information from the people behind you, across the street, you know, behind you in the corner house. But look, it's really important that you get to know your neighbors. Get to know at least one neighbor on either side of your house. If you're, you know, a good person and you like and you're sociable like me, get to know both neighbors. Get to know the neighbor across the street. My old neighbor used to watch my house for me. I gave him the alarm code to my house, and he came, he came in and, you know, he would feed the cat for us, pick up the mail. You know, he was great. Of course, I mean, you don't want to do that if you don't really know the person and you don't trust them. But at the very minimum, get to know them. How many of you have been, be honest, how many of you have been living next to somebody for at least four or five years now and never even taken the time to welcome them when they moved in the neighborhood or even gotten to know them? Be honest. All right, good. One honest person in the group. Come on. There's a, I know there's more. All right. Look, take the time just to knock on the door. Bring bring something. Bring them a cold drink. Bring them something simple. Or just go by and say, hey, you know, we've never had a chance to talk. I'm so-and-so. Here's my cell phone number. If you're ever going out of town, I'll keep an eye on your house for you. Okay? They're probably going to think you're crazy and you want to rip them off as soon as they go out of town. But, you know, that's a joke. You guys are supposed to be laughing. I'm not going to feed you guys unless you guys can stay awake and stay with me tonight. So, okay? No, but seriously, it's, it's really good if you could go and spend the time to get to know your neighbors. You don't have to give them your house key, but at least get to know them and let them know. If you're going out of town, let them know. On, on, on a side note, as far as going out of town, if you're going to go out of town and you want us to come by and patrol your, uh, your home, shoot me an email with the address and the date you're leaving. And I will, look, I will check on your house when I'm working, and then I'll send it to our patrol units too, so they can keep, up, keep an eye on your home as well. All right? So try to get to know at least one or two of your neighbors if you can. That's what we're encouraging. All right. The next page, we're going to revamp this with a, a bunch of other information about um, residential things you can do to protect your home and your vehicles and things like that. But that's all stuff we covered in our first year's meeting. So we're not going to repeat that this year, okay? We don't want to be repetitive. That's why we're going to change it up. We may come back to it in a couple of years, but we want to keep it interesting and exciting, and we don't want to cover the same thing every year. So what this is, though, is basically um, what to do to protect yourself from vehicle burglaries. Our biggest problem, and we see it all the time, and you might even see it in this crime blotter. I haven't looked at it, the one that we just passed, is people actually leaving items in their car or leaving their cars unlocked. And we tell people all the time, do not leave anything in your car. Look, we have transients, people living on the streets. We have crooks in the city. We have people coming through the city ripping us off. Don't help them. Don't help them, right? Take the things out of your car. If you're gonna go shopping and you're gonna go put baggage or, or, or you know bags in your car, then move the car to another spot, take the time to do it because there are people out there in parking lots watching your car. We had it over at Live Oak Park two or three years ago uh, on Easter, or not Easter, but the, the Saturday before Easter Sunday, they were doing the Easter egg hunt. We had black and whites out there and everything. Two ladies, two separate ladies got out of their car, took their purses, put them in the trunk of their car, and on video, the city had video, the, you know, there was video, you couldn't make out the license plate, we never found out who it was, but in a matter of 30 seconds, 
Two, two guys came out of a car, there was another driver, hit both cars, they cracked the, wi the window over the car in seconds, they popped the trunk, they're in, and they're out in a matter of 30 seconds with your purses. But the biggest problem we're having is people leaving laptop computers, GPS systems, purses, coins in the, in the car. We have people that ride around on bikes at night. We're out there stopping them and trying to find out what's going on, but we can't be there all the time. Sometimes our, our field units get tied up. So we're telling you, and you're going to see a video tonight of someone going into a car where they just left the window open just a bit. You know, that happens. So be careful. Don't leave anything in your car. I don't leave anything in my car. And if I do, it's nothing worth value, and I put it under the seat. Even an empty, even a bag that's got, like, my kids' backpacks. People, crooks aren't going to know if there's anything in there or not. They're not smart to figure that out, right? So now you've got a window bashed in, and you've gone through your car, and you've got to spend 100 or 200 hours just to fix your window. Maybe you didn't get anything, but was it worth it? So something to think about, all right? And there's some more tip, hit, um, hints and tips on here for you as well. City services, we have a great graffiti removal system, and it's the numbers on here. Um, as, as far as uh, shopping carts, abandoned shopping carts, call the numbers that are on here. We used to have separate sheets for each number, but we're gonna simplify that and make that easier for you. Um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the tagging and the vandalism because we've done that last year. Um, but call it in and we have a crew that actually they drive around if they see it before we even anybody calls it in They remove it. They take a picture of it and they put it on a website So there's a record of it forever the date they took the picture They put a dollar amount and the GPS location of where that where the vandalism had occurred So it's a great resource and we've actually had uh, a few years back We arrested six people four kids and two adults uh, who had actually done about 150 160 separate acts of vandalism all at the same kind of tag so um, call it in, please, call it in. And then lastly, uh, the last page for notes. Also, look, some of you might have neighbors that you, um, you know, might be in the room that you might have concerns about. They may be watching when this goes on the, um, the city site or the, the city channel. So if you have concerns or questions that maybe you don't have time to ask, or maybe you have something you don't want to say out loud, write it down and give it to Rob or myself before you leave tonight and give us your email or your phone number or both and your name and we'll get you an answer and we'll look into the problem. But again, the, the easiest way for me to deal with your problems is to email me and we resolve all your quality of life issues. And, and we usually do pretty good about getting them done within a, within a short matter of time. Some problems take a little bit longer than others and Rob's going to cover that in the PowerPoint. So I want to go over a couple things before I give it to Rob, but I want to make sure i got the time to do that. i got about five minutes, so I'm going to do that real quick. Uh, and that'll give Rob plenty of time to do what he's got to do. Fumigation burglaries, these are trends and things that are going on other than what Rob's going to cover. Um, if your house is being tented, shoot me an email and let me know for termites. Um, the big thing we've had going on the last couple of years, and we had one recently in our stationery, I don't think it was the city, are guys that are, um, was it Arcadia Cap? Did you hear about that one? Um, the fumigation where, where, where was it, Brent? What was it? Arcadia, yeah. Arcadia, so Arcadia had one. And these dummies went in there with, you know, cloths or t-shirts or something over their, their mouth. And, and obviously you have all your belongings in your home. So they go in there, they cut through the tent with the gases and everything. They put something over their face, they go in and steal your stuff. Well, a neighbor or somebody called, I don't know the circumstances, but Arcadia PD rolls out there, they surround the place, and these dummies stayed in the house for quite some time, I think, until they finally, you know, gave up and surrendered, okay? But that's fairly common. So if you're going to have your house um, tented for termites, Make sure that you email me, let me know. We have a gal, Eleanor at the station, who already emails us and lets us know because we have the termite companies on board to give us a heads up so that we can routinely patrol those. But sometimes we don't get those you know, as soon as we want. Um, just email me directly and we'll get out there right away and we'll keep an eye on it. And let your neighbors know. If you're not gonna be there for a couple days, maybe that's a perfect opportunity to go talk to your neighbor and say, hey, I'm getting my house tenant. If there are any problems, you see anything suspicious, will you please call the station or call me, right? And go from there, okay? So fumigation burglaries, distraction burglaries, okay? Distraction burglaries are, and with the older folks especially, but not, not just the older folks, what'll happen is somebody will knock on your door, they wanna go through your house, they wanna get to your backyard because maybe they're gonna paint the back of their garage that butts up to your backyard, right? Okay, or maybe they're from the water company, maybe from the gas company. You didn't call them out there, but they wanna go in your house and inspect. You never wanna let anybody in your home that you didn't call to come there in the first place. And if you're not sure, you call, you ask them for the company number, you call us, and we'll come out and make sure they're legitimate. Because what happens a lot of times is, they'll come in, 
They'll distract you. They'll take you to the far back part of the house or even the backyard. In the meantime, they're texting their partner outside who's now in your house going through all your belongings. Okay? Don't allow that. My aunt lived in the city for years. She passed away a few years ago. Lived on Garibaldi. She was watering her front yard, and somebody hopped over the, the back fence, went through her house. She came around to the back as he was exiting the house. Fortunately, he didn't get much, but he still went through the house. And what would have happened had she walked in on him? You never know. Look, nowadays, I grew up in Temple City, right down the street, OK? We're going to leave it at that. We're not going to talk about what's going on now. That's just an inside joke from all. Um, 